Hi, I'm Naomi Diggs. And I'm Lisa Strait from the University of Washington Medical School. We're here to present our study entitled Factors That Contribute to Blood Loss in Patients with Colonic Angiodysplasia from a Population-Based Study to be published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Co-authors on this project are Jennifer Holub, David Lieberman, and Glenn Eisen from Oregon Health Sciences University. Angiodysplasia is an important cause of occult and acute gastrointestinal blood loss, especially in the elderly. The prevalence of angiodysplasia quoted in the literature ranges from 1% in asymptomatic patients to up to 50% in studies of severe lower GI bleeding. Most studies of angiodysplasia are small and reflect a single center's experience. Therefore, we use the Clinical Outcomes Research Initiative database to describe the epidemiology and treatment of colonic angiodysplasia. The Clinical Outcomes Research Initiative, or CORI, is a consortium of gastroenterology practices developed to study endoscopic procedures in routine clinical practice. During our study, 73 sites across 27 states provided data. The majority of these sites were community practice, followed by university hospitals and veterans affairs hospitals. We identified unique patients documented to have angiodysplasia during colonoscopy over a two-year period. We collected data recorded by the endoscopist in the endoscopy report generator, including patient demographics, exam indications, exam findings, and any treatment given. Our main study outcome was evidence of blood loss, either occult or acute, including anemia, evidence of fecal occult blood, hematochesia, or melana. Our second outcome was receipt of endoscopic therapy. We used multiple logistic regression to identify independent predictors of evidence of blood loss and receipt of endoscopic therapy. Of the greater than 200,000 colonoscopies performed during the two-year study period, 4,159 patients were found to have angiodysplasia, or about 2%. Most patients were older than 60 years of age, and many had comorbid illness. Of the 4,159 patients with angiodysplasia, 56% were noted to have evidence of blood loss, while 7% had actively bleeding angiodysplasia at the time of endoscopy. Lesions were most often right-sided and multiple in number. Independent predictors of blood loss included inpatient status, age greater than 80 years, severe comorbid illness as indicated by ASA class, black race, Hispanic ethnicity, and multiple or diffuse lesions. 17% of all patients with an angiodysplasia received endoscopic therapy. 27% of patients with angiodysplasia and evidence of blood loss received therapy, while 68% of actively bleeding lesions received endoscopic treatment. Independent predictors of treatment included evidence of blood loss, bleeding at the time of endoscopy, young and very old patients, inpatient status, angiodysplasia greater than five millimeters in diameter, and lesions located in the right colon. Treatment varied by practice type and region. For example, treatment was more common in a university setting than in a community-based practice, and more common in the Southwest than in the Northwest. Data from this large nationwide study indicate that angiodysplasia are an uncommon finding in patients undergoing colonoscopy. Elderly patients, patients with severe comorbid illness, and those with multiple lesions were more likely to have evidence of blood loss. Endoscopic treatment was appropriately reserved for symptomatic patients, but was inconsistently utilized. Variations in treatment practice point to the need for a more evidence-based and standardized approach to the management of patients with colonic angiodysplasia. Thank you, and please see our full article published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology.